Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fast Forge Word. So today we will be working on the projection room and the uh, car area. I'm talking a little quieter because it is uh, like midnight and my mom is asleep. And if I wake her up, she'll be very, very, very mad at me. So I'm talking a little quieter. Um, there are a few things um, I really want to talk about today is forging. I recently had a long conversation just in general um, about forging with You Got Owned the other day and it got me thinking a lot about it and I posted something on Halo Customs. Now Halo Customs had a thread about forging and one thing that I found very interesting was it was all about how how to lay the first piece and the first thing I had said was the hardest thing I find is to place the first piece after that the map seems to build around it so as you can see in this map my first option was to place the um, excuse me was to build the screen after that I can build where I know the snack bar is going to be the projection hut and all that stuff and I posted a little paragraph that I'm going to read to you about making mini games because um, there was a post off that post of how to find inspiration for a mini game. And I am first a mini game forager, then a flood. And excuse me, I'm going to yawn because it is late. <sighs> excuse me. And I want to read this paragraph to you um, right now and I am going to. <clears throat> I tend to try to create or revamp real life games. I've made Marco Polo, which is my map Marco Polo, and I've tried to remake Monkey in the Middle. It didn't turn out well. Usually trying to recreate real games gives me ideas for new mini games. Occasionally you can revamp a game someone else created in order to create an entirely new game. I find mini games to be the most fun to forge because it requires a skill that isn't usually seen while forging other types of maps. It requires technicality. You need to know how to make the game work the way you want it to. Similar to working with redstone in Minecraft. Although redstone looks harder than forging, I feel that the difficulty is the same. I am a quite better for better at forging than at redstone, but redstone is based on a computer slash binary system and with little effort but a lot of time anybody could learn it. Just like anybody can learn to make a minigame. Complex minigames also take the same amount of time to create as, say, a flood map. While the flood forger must look for balance and aesthetics, the minigame forger must play with the game type settings as well as the actual, the actual, it says actually, technical parts of the map. Usually this includes jumping between custom games and forge until you, re you get a result that is what you want, but more importantly is consistent. You never want a minigame that changes every time you play it. The minigame forging process is also harder because they usually take longer to test. Minigames are the only game type that you have to test with different amounts of people. When you are creating a minigame, you have to envision how it would play with 16 instead of 4, and the outcome isn't always what you wanted. Sometimes this cannot be fixed and you are forced to limit the amount of players, but, it usually, this, but usually it involves fixing the map, sometimes in drastic ways. So the next time someone tells you that minigames are too easy to forge, tell them to remake Jump Rove, Wraiths, Wraith, Splattering, Teleporters, and all, and tell them to get back to you. Now the last part, what that means is, um, you should all know what the map Jump Rope is, if you know Halo by Darth Human. Um, it's the one where the vehicles go down and you jump and try to avoid them. When the Wraiths used to glitch out back in Reach, and they do a little bit in Halo 4, um, he actually adjusted teleporters so that the Wraiths would fly directly at people. So... What I really feel is forging is an art, and I really, really, really like it. Um, the thing is, I was going to say something more important there, but I kind of didn't have anything to say. Um, Minigame forging is the hardest. Um, the number one reason is you can only do it once. What I mean is, if a flood person makes... If someone makes a subway flood map, and someone else makes a subway flood map, those two maps can be completely different. Sometimes flood maps are even created off other people's flood maps, and they still are different. 
So, the thing with minigames, though, is you can only do it once. If I make Marco Polo, no one else should make Marco Polo, because otherwise they're really stealing my idea. That's what's so hard with minigame forging, is coming up with an original idea and then executing that idea. And not only executing that idea, but executing it faster than anybody else can. For example, I was creating a remake of Dark Human's uh, Trench Warfare. The day I started that, I saw Mr. Pokephile's review of his remake of Trench Warfare. And I originally was going to continue, but I changed my mind. So, what I'm saying is, you know, forging is not easy. And forging also requires a lot of inspiration. You know, you can't just... That's why these episodes don't come out as often, because I don't always want to forge, or I don't always want to forge the same map. I have three or four maps that are just sitting there that I have not completed yet, because I just, I have either have given up on them and just haven't deleted them, or I just, like, forgot about them, or a lot. It's very, very hard, and um, you see, like, all these people, like, come out with all these Forge maps, and it's like, oh, you'll never catch up to him. It, it, it's not about catching up to people. For example, Reckless Riley is probably considered the dark human of Halo 4 right now. He has probably some of the most mini games. He has some of the most creative ones, and Charles Stute is right behind him. Um, I'm, pro I'm pretty low on the spectrum this time around, even though I have made several a lot of mini games um, some of them I don't play anymore because they're really not very good um, but you know it's it's not about how many you have it's the quality of the ones you do have how original the ones you have are and how fun they are to play so for example I have my map Warthog Roundup there is no other map in Halo 4 that is like that there is no other map with a carousel like warthogs that shoot to people in the middle. There is no map out there that is similar to that. Uh, Reckless Riley has his um, icebreakers map. There is no other map where you jump across the little pads and destroy other things. They are so original. Charles Stute has both Moonwalk and Blaze Cave, which are um, similar in concept but executed differently where the kill ball is the weapon now you did see things like that in reach however they're not executed even i tried to make a, a map where it's uh, basically you push kill balls but it, it didn't turn out well but you did not see um blaze cave or moonwalk recreated in that essence where no one can move or you have to stay in this for the case of moonwalk you have to stay in the center where the kill ball rolls around the outside and for the sake of Blaze Cave, where you know more and more kill balls keep spawning until one person is left standing, you know you don't see those types of maps anywhere else because they are original, and they they are good. So even though Reckless Riley may have I don't know 15 or 16 maps, if those maps, which all of them happen to most 98% of them are very good quality, but if they're not good quality it's not important so you know it's it's all about quality basically um it's similar that way in any other map too um you see insane Miac comes out with map after map after map after map and they're all really really good you know um you know you have to give them points for putting out those great maps but once again if someone it's not about how many you come out it's about how fun they are to play how well they are made in general it's replayability is really the thing that makes a forge map no matter how many you have no matter how popular you are it all has to do with how your maps play i have example duquesne 23 does his game cast every friday or sometimes other days of the week I, every time he does Halo 4, I submit a map to him, and he usually watches them. Why? Why? Because he knows that if I have a map, even if the map is in testing, the quality of the map is good. I always make good quality maps, and 
you know, in testing, they're gonna have bugs. And that's why you say, I need to test it. This map is going to be tested. Do not be afraid to test maps in custom lobbies. How else are you gonna test them? You can't test them if you can't play them. Just make sure when you put it up, everybody knows that it is being tested. Say, it's gonna be tested. We might have to play it two or three times. And then, but don't, and unless your lobby is all about testing, you know, don't spend the whole time testing maps. But do not be afraid to test maps. Take feedback from everybody. Um, when I did Mr. Pokerfiles contest, and I didn't, I didn't place, but I didn't care. I immediately, when I finished that map, I asked around, you know, I need to test a map for a competition. Is anybody interested in helping me test this map? I got loads of feedback from people. I got a bunch of people, about nine or ten people who wanted to come and play my map. I said, please give me feedback. Tell me anything you find that is broken. Try to break the map. One, I have to wrap up here, but one thing I have to say, guys, when forging, bring a friend who's gonna break your map. I have got a fate GOF and Kingly Hobo. I send them in and I say, break the map. That way you can fix it, or if it can't be fixed, you can adjust it in a way where everything works out.